So without further ado, help me welcome to the stage the CEO of Breakthrough Coaching, Dr. Mark Zana. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Woo! All right, we're going to have some fun. Save the best for last. No. How many people have seen me speak before? I look a lot taller in person, don't I? Everybody says that. They do. Okay, who's ever been to a Tony Robbins seminar? Right? We get confused all the time. NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. We're going to have a, a little game with my presentation today. Made it fun. And so we're going to practice some hand signals together. And some sounds as well. So when I ask you if something is good, you're going to do what? Like this, right? Now give me the good sound. Yeah, it's about a three. Yeah, okay, good. Now if something is really good, we're going to do what? Stamp your feet. Woo! Yes. Excellent. The mic's working now, Jan. All right. If something is bad, what are we going to do? Boo. And if something is really bad, we're going to do what? Now, we're not going to have really bad. We're going to have, that's insane. You got it? Ready? One, two, three. That's insane. Beautiful. Okay, good. Really good. Boo. And that's insane. So here we go. This is a true story. I always start every joke that I've ever told. They're usually Italian jokes with, this is a true story. But this really is a true story. And uh, if you like my cool animations, we're going to play the game to see if you can guess the date. Okay? And then we're going to rate the date. How's that? Good. Really good. Bad. And that's insane. Okay? 1895, what happened? First adjustment. Who gave it? Who got it? Garvey did. Was it good? Or really good? Tell me. Let me hear you. I can't hear you. Really good. That started it. Okay. Guess what happened just 11 years later? 1906. What happened to Didi? It took 11 years to get put in jail. Now, he was not going to tell anybody about the first chiropractic adjustment. We know he founded Palmer College, but he was going to keep it secret. But they actually told him, say, come on, Didi, we've got to tell everybody about it. And he did. And they put him in jail. Is that bad? Bad, yeah, not quite insane. Probably okay. All right. This one is going to get you. 12,000. What does that number represent? 12,000. It's 12,000 people, by the way. 12,000 brothers and sisters of yours in chiropractic. What happened to those 12,000 chiropractors in the first only 30 years of chiropractic? 12,000 of them. What happened? They went to jail. What do you think that is? That's insane. I remember uh, standing underneath the bell tower in, uh, at uh, Life University with Dr. Mike Flynn. How many of you know Mike Flynn? Have you seen the movie Doctored yet? So he tells the story in Doctored about how his dad, he practices in Louisiana. BJ told him they're from Michigan. He said, you've got to go down. If you've ever spoken to Mike Flynn, he speaks with kind of a Cajun drawl right now. So you wouldn't know that his family was from Michigan. And BJ sent them out and sent them down to Louisiana because they knew they were going to go to jail. And if you walk into that bell tower in Life Chiropractic College and you've never had the experience of seeing your chiropractic brothers and sisters who've gone to jail, every, the name of every chiropractor who was jailed is inscribed inside that bell tower. It's as tall as, twice as tall as his ceiling. And Mike takes me over and, and he shows me, that's my dad's name. And if that doesn't make it real, I don't know what is. 12,000 people went to jail to do the stuff that we gripe about and moan about each and every day. Would you go to jail to be a haircutter or a, right, a, I don't know, movie shop owner or whatever? I don't know many professions who would go to jail. Well, tell you what, <clears throat> them throwing us in jail, and we're going to hear a little theme going in this presentation. There's definitely a theme in our profession. Uh, there was a conspiracy, and Dr. McCauley spoke about it in the opening session this morning. There was a conspiracy 
against chiropractic. For over a quarter of a century, our brothers and sisters in the American Medical Association actually systematically, systematically tried to destroy, contain, and limit our profession. Could you imagine that? And it's an interesting thing. I'm talking, I do a lot of name dropping, but in that movie, Doctor, there is an amazing session where uh, Dr. Lou Sportelli, now if you know Lou, Lou Sportelli is, uh, he's got to be what now, about 75 years old, something like that, on the kind side. <laughs> he's in this movie, young, handsome, unbelievable Italian, of course, unbelievable Italian looking, on the David Susskind show, and he's being grilled and put through about, is this really true? Is it you guys really uh, trying to be uh, squashed out of the healthcare? And Lou tells the story, and I don't know if many people know this. We're gonna talk about the Wilkes trial. How many people have heard about the Wilkes case? Well, do you know how chiropractic won the Wilkes case? What was the, the, the breaking point, the swinging point? So you know how in, this is a true story, how in um, uh, Watergate there was Deep Throat who gave the secrets to Woodward and Bernstein? Well, do you know that there was a, a Deep Throat in our Wilkes trial as well? And one of the most touching, amazing, emotional moments that I ever had was to get to see the manila envelope. <clears throat> it was a member of the American Medical Association, the high ups, and uh, he actually put the information in there that swung the trial in our favor and slid it under Dr. Lou Sportelli's door. And I got to see that, it was amazing. So here we go, we're gonna take you back to 1963. And in 1963, the American Medical Association established the Commission on Quackery. Now, a lot of you have seen me speak before know that my dad's a chiropractor too. <clears throat> I can remember being a young child on the playground and being told your daddy is a quack. And it stung, it hurt. And I remember having to go home at the dinner table and ask my mom, mom, is daddy a quack? No, daddy is not a quack. I promise you that. It's 1963. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's boo. Give him big, big boo. Really, that's a horrible thing. But in 1966, those boo, hiss, boo people actually coerced behind closed doors. Now, a lot of chiropractors have no idea about this. Who knows what a CPT code is? Well, current procedural, a lot of hands going up. Current procedural terminology. It's true. Who owns the copyright on the CPT codes that you use to bill all your services? You know the AMA owns that copyright? And you know that in a behind, behind the door, closed door session, that the AMA actually got a deal to make it mandatory by HICFA to, for you to use and all healthcare providers to use those CPT codes on your billing forms. And, and has that fit right in chiropractic since we've used them? Do they fit chiropractic? Uh-uh, they totally don't. So let's give them a big boo for that. Boo, boo hiss, boo hiss. Here's the ka-ching, right? Ka-ching, hmm? $172 million every single year the American Medical Association earns for that copyright for those codes. Can you imagine what could we do in chiropractic with 172 million? We would have George Clooney on our chiropractic commercials, <laughs> right? $172 million a year, big boo. But it, the story gets better. There's hope. And what happened in 1987? That's when they lost the Wilkes trial. That's when Attorney McDaniels, yeah, that's a big yay, right? Yeah! Attorney McAndrews took him to court, and we won. What was the monetary award that chiropractors won, by the way, for 
25 years, a quarter decade of systematically having a campaign to destroy and rid healthcare of our profession. What was the monetary award? Zero. We didn't win any money. And guess what? They came back in 1990 and they appealed. And guess what? They lost the appeal. And woohoo, yes. That was a big yes. So they lost it, but they didn't go away, did they? They didn't go away. By the way, are there any medical doctors in the room? Let me say that I really enjoy knowing you. Break anything, maybe I'll call you. So the tug of war began. And the tug of war of healthcare regulation that you are in right now in your practice began back then. Because in 1990, even though they lost their appeal, and even though we won victoriously, and even though it was stated that they cannot in ever, ever in perpetuity come at us the way that they did, <clears throat> they didn't go away. 1996, Bill Clinton signed, and this is the beginning of health care as you know it today. And that's where uh, Clinton signed the HIPAA law, and everybody knows what HIPAA is, right? That's that. What is it? Health insurance, right, exactly, something like that. <laughs> and this is the first time that patients' personal health information became a political issue. It wasn't discussed before. It wasn't, healthcare wasn't in POC. So there was a little stuff in Medicare. We got the treatment of subluxation by hand only or with x-rays from Medicare, that sort of slid in there sideways. We're still struggling with that. But this was a landmark date, 1996. In 2000, the Office of the Inspector General began something called a compliance program. And again, we started to see compliance becoming part of the conversation of chiropractic. Before this era, what was perfectly acceptable documentation in a chiropractic practice? Tra uh, travel card, right? It's an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardboard, folded in half, written in hieroglyphics that only the chiropractor could read. True story. That contained five or six years of chiropractic health records. It's true. I've seen some of them actually say, okay, here's what I adjusted and here's the weather today, it's sunny today. Can't make that up. And so this is when all of a sudden, being a chiropractor stopped being the fun that it was prior to this kind of stuff. So when I talked to my dad about chiropractic and his passion about chiropractic, 58 years now, chiropractic, and... Uh, Dr. McCauley was right when he said that DD founded it and BJ promoted it and Jim Parker saved chiropractic. So back in 61, my dad was one of the original brown baggers. You know what a brown bagger is? When you came to your first Parker seminar, you got a little vinyl brown bag and you took it home. And what did you do with that, other, with that brown bag? Who can tell me? You had your books there, but you went home and who'd you meet with? everybody else in your town who brought a brown bag home. And there were brown baggers clubs all over the United States. And, and in fact, and Canada. And if you look back in the annals of Parker history, you're going to find there are some books that show the very first clinics, freestanding clinics that were built by chiropractors who came to Parker it was never, there wasn't such a thing as a freestanding clinic. There might have been one or two gone step, but it wasn't a thing that you could think about building your own clinic. And now it's a normal, regular thing. Right? We're talking about picking colors with Jen a second ago. It right? wasn't thought of until Parker did that. And so now the government came in and they said, okay, you chiropractors are having way too much fun. We're going to put the screws on you a little bit. And so in 2005, this OIG means what? Office of the Inspector General, they started going out and doing compliance audits in chiropractic practices. Same thing 
really about the same time the insurance companies started realizing they couldn't make any money by increasing the numbers of beneficiaries, and so they started doing something called post-payment audits. So what's a post-payment audit? Say, insane, that's insane. Post-payment audit's insane. So you, they paid you the money, right? You all know what an EOB is, right? CAs, doctors have no idea what an EOB is, CAs, by the way. So an EOB comes and it says, you did everything right. And it came with a check attached. And what'd you do with the check? You cashed the check. <laughs> what'd you do with the money? You spent the money, paid your staff. Six years later, what do they want? Want the money back, right? That's insane. It's insane, not so cool. However, our documentation hasn't been so cool. So this is nice, so the OIG starts their audits, 94% Medicare documentations uh, that we, we didn't pass muster, 94%. This is our first pass at it, right? By the way, how many codes do we bill Medicare? Well, one maybe called three, but it's really one, right? And we screw the documentation up 94% of the time? One code, one code. And we want more, right? So that's insane. 2006, we get a second pass. Oh no, 2006, out of a response to that OIG audit, 94%. This is one of the secret silent moments that occurred in chiropractic history that most chiropractors don't know about, these next two slides, and have done so much to level the playing field for chiropractic. <clears throat> The American Chiropractic Association, the Association of Chiropractic Colleges, uh, the Chiropractic Association of uh, the Chiropractic Congress, Council, the Congress of Chiropractic State Associations, COXA, which is a terrible acronym, but it, they, there it is anyway, and FCLB, as the Federation of Chiropractic Licensing Boards, got together and they said, we've got to fix this. We've got to get together, and out of that came something that I'm very proud to sit on with Dr. McCauley, and that is the Chiropractic Summit. Now, y'all, have you heard about the Chiropractic Summit? Please raise your hand if you've heard about the Chiropractic Summit. Okay, now everybody say, because no hands went up, by the way, like three hands went up. Say, that's insane. The Chiropractic Summit is meeting for the 15th time in August. We've met 15 times, 43 leading bodies of chiropractic. Any acronym that you can think of, any chiropractic college, we go in a room, we lock the doors, and it's quiet. You can't tell anything that happens outside of that room. Total non-disclosure policy. We're not allowed to say a word, but we get in there and we hammer out our stuff we get on the same page together so that when we go up on Capitol Hill, we ask for expansion in Medicare. By the way, we are like this close to being full vote accepted in the VA system. Is that important? Yeah. yeah. Why is that important? Cultural authority. Cultural authority. When we are in that VA system, it might not impact everybody's practice financially, but when we're there, that's huge. Ask Bill Morgan, who's up in uh, Bethesda. I mean, that's a big, big, big deal. So that chiropractic summit came out of the group to work and help chiropractors improve their documentation. And so guess what happened in 2007? More regulations. Now, 2000, who knows what PQRS is? PQRS, right? Physician what? Quality? reporting or something like that, right? And so that PQR started out as PQRI. It wasn't mandatory until when? Like this year, yeah. So it wasn't mandatory until this year. And it started in 2007. Now, how many things do we have to document as chiropractors under PQRS? How, how, many, how many things? So it's Medicare, right? It's one code, give or take, it's the adjustment, right? So these are quality modifiers. How, how many modifiers, how many modifying codes do we have in chiropractic? Two, so there's two, <laughs> there's two. One is what? 
pain and the other is what? Outcome assessment questionnaires, that's it. So the, to be compliant with PQRS, you have to ask a patient about pain now, so we'll give them an outcome assessment questionnaire at least once every 30 days. Is that hard? Y you might not think, but look what happened in 2009. They knocked on our doors again. Another documentation report. Oh my goodness, we got so much better. 83% from 94%, we didn't pass documentation. On one code. Two modifying codes. Oh my goodness, but we want full expansion. Then they gave us the electronic health record. How many folks converted to the EHR, electronic health rec record in the room? Okay, great, that's awesome. Cairo Touch will be super happy <laughs> to hear that. So 2009, the government decided they were gonna ante up and pay for all of us to convert to electronic health records. In fact, they were gonna put $44,000 on the table for each and every chiropractor, each and every provider to convert to EHR, amazing. And in 2010, just to crank it up a little bit, by the way, the electronic health record, that $44,000 didn't come from Obamacare, that was before uh, Obamacare, that was from the Balanced Budget Act that we wanted to uh, try and with uh, Newt Gingrich, right? Um, he's not running this year yet, is he? <laughs> not yet, right, he's the only one, so. Obama signs the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, into law. So, w w was that good, bad? That's insane a little bit, right? That's insane, oh my goodness. And um, so he signs it into there, and inside this document, which is taller than me, if you were to have to read, it's not hard, but it's taller than me, the number of clauses that are in, there's the clause number 2000, 2706, right, 2706, is the non-discrimination clause. Did you know that it's in the Obamacare law? That if a medical physician is on a plan and they're providing a service and it's in the scope, that's in your scope, that you have to be on that plan also, not you particularly, but a chiropractor has to be on the plan also. Guess who hates that clause? The AMA has publicly come out, and we actually have the documentation. So I thought the Wilkes trial said that they could never do that again. How is it they're, they're back, right? This is, they're back, oh my goodness, they're back. And they're going after this 2706 non-discrimination clause, try and make it so that it's not in there, that they can knock you out. And they work very hard at that. It's one of the things, the, the, one of the legislative secrets that happened last year that most people don't know. <clears throat> We're moving ahead now. This, they're, they're turning the, uh, the uh, clamps tighter. Now, this is true story. There is now a website called the Physician Compare website. How many people know about that? One person knows about that. Do you work for the government? No. So sometimes you gotta ask, you never know, right? You check their, check their rings, they have a CMS ring or something like that, right? <laughs> OIG ring, like a football you know, met, uh, championship ring. So CMS, you can, you can actually Google it and Google Physician Compare website, your name's on there, by the way. And how, if you converted to EHR is on there, and if you did PQRS um, is on there. Can you imagine? It's true, I'm not making that up. It's on there, your name, Google it right now. You can do it on your phone. So why is that important? Because who else can Google that? Patients can Google that. You think a patient's gonna check out to see if on the one code you're allowed to build a government that you're doing the two qualifying codes? You think they would care that you're reporting the three codes that the government asked you to report? Probably. Do you think they're gonna care if you have switched to an electronic healthcare uh, record management system or not? Yeah, huh? guess who else is gonna Google it and go on there? Anybody do um, PI work, personal injury work? Mm. How about when the opposing attorney pulls that slide up in the courtroom? Says, Doc, here you're non-compliant on the one code the government lets you bill. <laughs> Not so cool, right? Not so cool. So we want to make sure that we get up to speed. Um, 
you're going to see the clock move a little faster now. In 2012, the uh, first EHR incentive payments were made. Anybody get a check for converting to EHR doing meaningful use? Awesome. So you guys are a good class. I like that. That's really a good sign to see. Up to $18,000 that first year per, per provider. Um, and then in 2013, HIPAA published the omnibus rule. What's omnibus rule mean? Omnibus means yeah, it cuts everybody's on the bus. It means everybody's on the bus. And it changed HIPAA. So did you know that in 2013, do you guys use a notice of privacy practices for your patients? So yeah, right? So in 2013, that changed from a one-page notice to how many pages in 12-point type? Nine pages. Who said nine pages? Winner. Very nice. Good job. Nine pages. So if you're still using the old one-pager, the OIG is out there doing audits, and it's really important that you watch that and are careful with that. Because when the OIG went out and they did the OCR, by the way, what's, who is the OCR? Uh, lots of acronyms here, right? Office of Civil Rights. Because protecting your privacy and your patient's privacy, guess what? That's considered a civil right. So you get prosecuted civilly for a breach of your patient's privacy. 89% error rate in the very first HIPAA audits that we had. That's pretty scary, right? 84%, 83% documentation rate, 89% error rate in HIPAA, not so cool. Right now, 10% of chiropractors have a current OIG compliance program in their practice. Can you imagine? 10%. What do you, let's do a real Tony Robbins anchor with that. Say, that's insane. Absolutely. By the way, what is an OIG compliance program for your practice? It's where you audit your own charts before somebody else does. It's that simple. It's that simple. 10% of chiropractors have it. Only 11,000 chiropractors got the incentive money that was out there in the billions of dollars that were out there. And only 30% of chiropractors have adopted an EHR. Only 30%. What do you have to say to that? That's insane. And they were going to pay you $44,000 to do it. Oh, my goodness. 2015. Here we are. Present day. This is it. Chiropractors across the country in January got a letter. In fact, they got two letters. <clears throat> the first letter said that if you're not using an EHR right now, guess what? We're going to ding you. We're going to take away 1% of your reimbursement. And next year, that climbs to 2%. And the year after that, it climbs to 3%. And then a lot of chiropractors got a second letter as well. And that second letter said, if you're not doing PQRS, the two qualifying codes that I talked about, then uh, you lose another 1%, and next year 2%, and the year after that 3%. So we're climbing up the percentage pretty fast. And I know a lot of you are saying, but that's Medicare. I don't really do a lot of Medicare. Anybody ever heard, as goes Medicare, goes everybody else? Yeah, because we're going to talk about the future in just a second. Only 5% of our profession right now uses PQRS in their practice. 5%, even though our names are published now on the Physician Compare website, only 5% of us are doing it. That's insane. It's insane, it's insane, it's insane. <clears throat> Medicare started in 2015, this year, first year, that Medicare has invoked a new rule that they can kick a chiropractor, kick a medical doctor, kick anybody who's billing Medicare out of Medicare, out of all federal billing for not doing PQRS and not using EHR. Can you imagine? Yeah, they can, what happens when somebody, when somebody revokes your Medicare privileges and that gets out into the community? 
not so cool. So it's not just about building Medicare. By the way, I, I get this one all the time. Say, Dr. Shannon, can, you know, I'm just not going to do Medicare. I'm opting out of Medicare, right? This is not a Medicare seminar. But can chiropractors opt out of Medicare? No. Can medical doctors? Yes. Yeah, say, that's insane. That's insane. But it's true. But it's true. We've got something coming up in 2015, ICD-10. So guess what? That's copywritten by the World Health Organization. There's no free ride there either. How is it that the medical establishment owns CPT, owns ICD, right? And they are the HIPAA police and the compliance police. Where does chiropractic fit in that? How do we get out of that insanity? Well, here's the future. Here's the future of chiropractic. 2016, all that $44,000 for each of us, it's all paid out. So there's no more incentive dollars uh, to switch to um, EHR after next year. All that money's paid out. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means ChiroTouch needs a new business model? No. What? What does it mean? It means that in 2017, that the insurance companies are off the hook. So right now, the federal government paid to get hospitals and medical doctors and chiropractors onto an electronic health record, even though a very small amount did it for us, about 30%. By the way, if we did it 30%, what's the percentage of medical doctors who switched to EHR? 95%. 95%. A little bit different because they own the farm, right? 2017, insurance companies no longer have an incentive uh, to not make it across the board. So we're being told somewhere between 2017 to 2019, all insurances are going to require an EHR. So what does that mean? Buy Cairo Touch stock. No, I'm not, it doesn't. You can buy it if you want it, right? So 2017 is where things are changing. So it's not about Medicare. It means that the bar has raised. The bar has been raised for chiropractic. In the days of the mom and pop uh, practice, where what we did in the four walls of our practice impacted only and affected only what occurred in our practice, and it didn't affect what happened to the chiropractor next door, those days are gone. I like to say that this electronic health record and this sharing of information has made us all one big chiropractic profession, again, the way we were in the very beginning. And there's some very good news that comes out of this, I promise you. First of all, we are switching the way that we will all be paid in the future. Uh, Number one, don't get me wrong. We're focusing on compliance, talking about uh, EHR, we're talking about ICD and Medicare and all of that, Obamacare. Is there gonna be more insurance next year for chiropractic care than there is this year or less insurance coverage? Say less insurance coverage. See, I like to say Obamacare is the home of the $5,000 deductible. Right? This is what's happening. Most of your patients, if they have health insurance, where do they get their health insurance? From their boss, from their employer, right? Employers are doing what? They're raising deductibles because it's the only way that they can afford for their employees to have any insurance at all. How many of you have had patients come into your practice this past year with a $5,000 deductible. Look at the, that's everyone in the room. Anyone more than a $5,000 deductible? Have you had a patient come in? 6,000? I hear eight, 10, $10,000 deductible. So what does that mean in your practice? You are a cash practice, like it or not. Okay, 
So, and by the way, my dad always says, Mark, I practiced before there was insurance, when there was insurance, and I'm practicing after they took insurance away. I'd like to know how many in the room have at least 50% of your practice in cash, at least 50%. That's awesome. I'm going to ask now, anybody more than 50%? Those are the happy people. They're the smiling people. Your goal, as of coming up, we're halfway through 2015, is to get that practice at least up to 50% cash. You're like, oh my gosh, right? And some of you are in states where there's still some pretty good insurance reimbursement. Guess what? That's going to change. That's going to change. So we want to focus on getting at least 50% up. And there's only one way that you can do that. So there may be a lot of people who teach cash practice and talk about different ways to present it to your patients, but what is the first thing that you have to do in your practice in order to charge a patient cash? Say what? Get the job done. You have to be effective, right? You've got to produce results. So the number one thing is not figuring out how to do whatever to make it, a, you know, a, let's make a deal for the patient. Number one thing is how do I become a better chiropractor? And I would focus a whole, and I'm a practice management consultant, so I, I should say focus on the business, right? Guess what? The business only follows the results. So the number one thing is, I want you to pick one thing when you go back to your practice that you're going to get better at in terms of your chiropractic skills. And that's as a team, okay? Because as Jen said before, you're going to pick your sweet spot, but the bar has been raised. Being good is not enough anymore. You got to be what? Awesome. You got to be extraordinary. You got to produce results that people talk about. Once you do that, guess what? Will people pay cash? You better believe they'll pay cash. They'll gladly pay cash. They'll glad because they have to. There's no alternative, right? They have a ten thousand dollar deductible. By the way, that's not a chiropractic deductible. That's a deductible. So they're going to spend that money anyway. You want to make sure that they spend it with you. So we're shifting now. And this is where chiropractic hits the sweet spot. So as reimbursement shifts and all the things that we're talking about and ICD-10 and, and PQRS and HIP and all those things start to become important in your practice, the number one thing, the most important thing that chiropractic generates and that's results is going to make sure that chiropractic is here, chiropractic is here in the future for a long time, for the long term. So we're switching, you probably have heard this before, from a fee-based system of reimbursement where you do a service and you get paid a fee, right? To a value-based, a value-based. And that's gonna be based upon two things, two things. The cost, are we more cost-effective in delivering care than any other type of a healthcare provider out there is chiropractic? Hands down. Hands down, my goodness, have a low back, for example, diagnosis, and go to a chiropractor. What's, what's a home run case for a chiropractor, right? Like the best, best case you ever had, I'm so thrilled. What is, what is that cost, the patient? Maximum. You know, it's just us here, you can say it. A couple of grand. Go to a medical doctor, God forbid, and have unnecessary surgery on your lower back. What is the anesthesiologist bill? Just the anesthesiologist is what? Could be, yeah, three grand, exactly right. Very interesting. So as it becomes evident, and this is the good news, as we begin collecting, and that's why they, by the way, the government didn't pay everybody $44,000 to convert to EHR just because they're nice. I call it sort of the gift that keeps on giving. They're going to now collect that data, crunch that data. And the good news for chiropractic 
is we're going to shine. We are going to rise and shine above everybody else because we deliver value. That's why I said you've got to work on your technique number one. Number one. So this is my favorite slide in the whole presentation. And what is that 95.5? It's a percentage. What's 95.5% represent? You know it. That is the chiropractic patient satisfaction rate. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Woo! That is, that is what's going to make sure that when all this other stuff happens, that chiropractic rises and shines and stands above. There's a slide that I didn't put up because they don't like that slide. And it's the 8% slide, because I figured this thing might get passed around, and I'd rather not have that passed around. 8% represents what? Chiropractic utilization. The number of people who come to a chiropractor at least once in a year. 8%. Oh my goodness. What is that? That's insane. Insane. So what are we going to do to break through the insanity? What are we going to do to make sure that this tide turns in our direction? Tell me. Number one. What are we going to do? We're, gonna, we're at education, we're going to work on our technique, right? And number two, are, are we going to do PQRS? Yeah, let's do it. Let's just do it. It's like pulling off a Band-Aid, right? We're going to do PQRS. Are we going to do EHR? We're going to do EHR. If we're not, we're going to hire a student who can do it for us, <laughs> right? Because some of us are a little older, you know, a little scared of the technology stuff. So there's a good chance we're going to be Batman and Robin. <laughs> it's going to happen, or whatever the female Robin would be. Right? And we're going to partner up. We're going to be stronger together. Well, the most important thing, and Jen took the words out of my mouth, is we're going to have passion. Is that right? Is that a good thing? You love chiropractic? All right, I do too. We're all done. Good job. Thank you. All right, Mike, you can play the music. <laughs>